welcome back to the second matchup of the day for week three of season three of Open Division. I'm your host, Cookie B, joined by my analyst, Pokemon Panda and Pauseable. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you so much for having us as always. More EU Overwatch soon to come here, fam. So stick tight here. It's going to be a banger. Yeah, and of course, I, I know that kind of the major thing we're looking at right now before we jump into this match is that both of these teams are 4-1. Playoffs are coming up hot. Panda, what, what does that mean that's riding on the line for, for both uh, Team Escape and Team Owo that we're about to go on? Both these teams are on the brink of having a more difficult time making it through playoffs. The one team to walk away with the victory. You want to make it into those final rounds with just one loss at most on your record to keep your playoff hopes alive, to make it into contender's trials is what these two teams are fighting for today. Losing two, having two losses on your record is a no good thing, especially halfway through open division. And possible, do you, do you think that nerves are going to be playing a factor? For these two teams right now knowing knowing everything panda says on the line i mean i think nerves always play a factor whenever you're uh playing in this uh this style of tournament right but especially now that we're only two weeks out we'll only after this it'll only be four matches uh it's not very many chances to lose but it's not very many chances to win either so you really got to keep your record up and we don't want to of course keep them waiting for too long so very, very quickly, guys, Panda and Pauseable, who do you think is going to take map? That's really hard to say here coming in. I mean, all SR differences aside, you can't really put those into a factor as well. Team Owo is going to be sitting up here with Starkill subbing in for their main off tank of JZX. Starkill prefers to play Zarya, so that could really go hand in hand. That if Klodoski, uh wants to flop over to a Reinhardt rather than a Winston, they could take that more slow-moving death ball. We saw in our previous matchup as well where Reinhardt wasn't necessarily played as well against the Winston. The dive accentured format that can still be played into these compositions could favor Team Owo in that factoid of taking the series. And if Starkill steps up on the Zarya play, since it looks like we're going to be going to Lijong Tower first, that is a very tank-heavy map now in the current meta. So some good Zarya play could really escalate his team far over Team Escape. Right, and of course, both of these teams seem, again, fairly evenly matched, both being 4-1. and one. Uh, Pauseable, tell us a little bit more about, about Team Escape, if you wouldn't mind their lineup. Well, Team Escape is actually pretty interesting. They're a fairly young lineup. Uh, according to the information we have, their oldest player is 22, and their second oldest player is 18. Everyone else is younger than that. So they're, they're new to this world of esports, so even if they aren't able to make it out uh, of Open Division into the Open Division playoffs this season, it's certainly a team to keep your eye on. For, I, I believe this is their first run in Open Division, and for them to have made it this far, so young on their first try, it certainly means that they are a team to be scared of. It's their first uh, time through Open Division for sure, but Censored, Lockin, and B Blue, they both they went eight and two in last EU Open Division as well. So it's definitely something to take note of that when you have a prolific main tank such as Censored leading the charge, that uh, that sort of um, experience that'll definitely play into a fact here. For team escape to gain an edge over team owo as well regardless of the fact both these teams have a strong arm going into this matchup and i'm just excited to see how they play against each other and we are indeed about to see how they play against each other we are going to give it over now to casters blank and cloudburst it is all you thank you so much cookie b over here very excited for the match coming up between team escape and team owo blank how are you doing I'm very well, thank you, Cloudburst. We're coming into this game. Li Shang Tao, like possible said, very heavy tank made at the moment. Team Escape, Team OO, both relatively new teams. Interesting how look how they go against this one. Like Panda says, they don't want to go two losses, especially this early in the tournament. But now, as we are getting right about to the mid midway here, teams are starting to much more coagulate together. So you have these 4,000 teams going versus 4,000 teams just because the way Swiss format works. Yeah, so probably quite an even matchup here. I mean, we can't really say much about where we can expect things going at all just yet. Um, but just looking at the players, as what we heard from Pokemon Panda, censored very strong in the main tank there. I mean, previous open division, he got pretty far himself. So interested to see if that plays a factor going forward. 
Uh, he's been on previous teams, a main tank, a huge, huge boon to your team if they are very good, because they kind of lead the charge here, especially onto a, a map like N Night Market, which we are going on to, where it's very much point-centric. Uh, unless you are playing dive, where you move around the space, if your main tank can make space there on the middle of the point, it's going to be a lot harder for the enemy team to make their way in. Definitely see that, and I mean, that coming in from Team Escape, Team Owo, what, what do you think we could be looking at over there from their player pool at the moment, especially seeing as we've had a sub already? Yeah, they're flicking around at the moment, Starkill, JZX, uh, we have been told that he's done some judo before, but this time it's Starkill who will hit him with the Hanegoshi, moving him straight to the floor, pushes him aside, and he'll be taking the role of off tank. Now, we're just getting into game, just a few more minutes here. The team's not quite coalesced over to their team comps at the moment. I am expecting to see a lot of this free free comp that relies on sustain, getting ultimate charge up, and especially on control, where ultimate charge can determine the flow of the fight. Whoever gets this first point cap is going to be taking the advantage. I could definitely see that playing a, a huge role here. And looking at something like what you've mentioned with 3-3, um, something that definitely comes to mind is the latest hero being Wrecking Ball. He kind of slots right in there, especially for control points. Yeah, and we've seen plays from South Korea and World Cup playing it with Fate on that hamster himself. And especially on Night Market, it's, it's great because this is this is all working to my favor as a colory boy here. Um, <laughs> Hamster on point, especially on Night Market, because he can, the radius is 10 meters from the pile driver will hit ev pretty much everyone on the point. You can make a large amount of disruption, hit the adaptive shield, Five, bump yourself up four, all the way to that three, massive health pool two, and just be the one, fawn on the side of the team. Nine, we are now getting into match. The teams are jumping out of the gate. we got Team Owo versus Team Escape. And right away, we do see uh, quite a, a bit of a a fray coming in from the Farah, just shooting down those rockets, and right away, Timo were first one on the point here. Timo were currently running with this free free comp. The charge comes through, doesn't hit anyone, but they do Ooh, find but sense. But since it does go down, Podolski being the one showing up, and Toasty in the front with the shield bash as well. This was incredibly well played from Team Owo. They noticed that the Far of Mercy is coming through the back lines, so they opt to just immediately make the decision to push onto the front line instead. They take down the tank, and it's pretty much all over from there because there's no space created for the Farah to get that consistent damage in. 70% rising, but Rose going down there is going to put another stop to this push. Yeah, this push is just going to have to wait, but the res does come off, and using that up for the next fight is going to be a really tough one for Team Escape. Farah with this barrage now, that's going to be a huge thing to eat through the tanks, but Coalescence already available. And there Rose using the Dragon Strike onto the point, hoping to get something out of that, and Censored does find Toasty. Clabbers comes back to really get Censored back before he's able to do much. Klodolski still looking quite healthy on the point, but his shield isn't. Vapely is trying to find something with his barriers right now, but not quite able to. They look like they're a bit cornered here on the point, and Team Escape slowly but surely coming out on top. They just weren't able to find the key picks that they were looking for, which was the Lucio and the Moira, which just kept Podolski so very healthy on the point for so long. And now Team Orwell coming back onto the point with a large ultimate advantage. B Blue doesn't have the barrage, which they absolutely require to punch through the big bouncers in the front line. Now they're coming back onto it. Toasty will be using this rally to engage with. They have a before of all their ultimates to work with. This Valkyrie Transcendence is going to have to use very reactionary. And there's the Earth Shadow, doesn't find as much as he wants to, Klodolski blocking most of that and getting a fantastic charge onto Faplele. Beat Blue gets another one, turn around onto Toasty, and they're having a tough one in the back there, but Moira is still up, not enough for them to win this fight. They do only invest the Earth Shadow, but this has allowed Team Escape to gain much more ultimates with the big stagger coming onto Star Starkill here. This is going to set them back in a big, big way. My ultimate I, I just need to start thinking of exactly what they can do here. They seem so evenly matched, but it's just ticking away little by little for Team Escape as they've evened out the time. The sound barrier has to be huge here. The self-destruct over the top to remove the flying birds in the sky of Mercy and Farah. But again, this overinvestment from Kodolski lock seems to be the problem. Oh, and there a grab coming out from Team Escape, and they also get the Dragon Strike, managing to pick up three in that fray, and Starkill picks up Sensor, though that's not enough. 
massively expensive fight for Team Owo. Now is the time to make the switch. The Wedding and Spawn. I would imagine a fire coming out here, but they push on ahead with this free free comp, which is getting completely shut down by the tank buster Hanzo and the far putting in the consistent damage in the sky. Having the ultimate charge or the ultimate ready to Team Escape's disposal right now, this is going to be such a tough push. I could just see Earth Shadow come down with the Rocket Barrage. Is this how it's going to happen? And there we go, Rocket Barrage right away on the high ground, not finding enough, but Starkill isn't able to pick him up either. And there, Earth Shadow comes down, not finding anyone from Sensor. Oh, bigger bang. Oh, and oh, they're actually making it put back. That's three. Starkill showing us that, hey, Guardians of the Galaxy mean nothing to Diva Bomb. Not at all. The starships are down, and that will be Team Escape not getting out of that one. We're gonna get a quick replay on that lovely place to Earth Shadow to open it up for the self destruct. But look, that was all the ultimates from Team Oh well, 99% and climb, and it's 99% on the time of Team Escape it means they just need to win one fight here so they can happily wait this one out, get the consistent damage out from the fire, and move up the barrage. Oh, but Far is having a rough time there. Starkill just chasing him down. Valkyrie gets popped from Loki. And it's really, it's going to be a difficult uphill battle for Team Escape to win this. A questionable coalescence which could have actually been used to damage the fire in the sky. The res comes out, so Rose is not able to come back into this one. 88% in climbing. And looks like Team Owo, they forced Pete Blue over to the side, which could be disastrous for Team Escape. And you see, they just keep going forward. They want to keep them out of this. Transcendence is coming up from Loki right now. You're hoping to get something. It's not enough. A nice huge from Team Owo. They're able to take advantage of these staggers. They make a great coordinated play with the Earth Shadow self-destruct. And that will move them up one point. A very, very brave and ambitious play to stay on the free free. Despite being counted out by the Hanzo and the Far in the Sky. Team Owo, they made this one work very impressed from the play that they had there. I didn't expect such a strong turnaround, especially at the 99% when they were just ticking away. You see, Team Escape probably could have played that one a little bit slower. They got a little bit over aggressive. The staggers came through. Beat Blue was looking for the positioning on the side, getting that advantage there, but it worked not in his favor as he staggered out. And that key linchpin pick from the barrage is unable to work. Now he's back on the far again, trying to count out the free free comp that they know Team O are going to be running. But this means he has to play outside the play zone of the point to take advantage of the air. You can see right away, very aggressive play from Team Owo. They just want to charge right in here and they pick up Censored with the absolute speed and velocity from that push. However, Rose does get to kick it back onto Klodolski, going down on himself though. And oh, that was a dangerous res from Loki, but no one's able to take him down. There is no frontline pressure from Klodolski, which means Team Escape can come back into this beat blue. Has a projected barrier on, but Starkill still finds him. Starkle always on top of Beat Blue. That's such an early coalescence coming out from Toledo, and they're just pushing them back. They really, really do want to pressure this with the free free comp. You desperately want to get much more ult charge, get that ult advantage to completely shut out pushes from the enemy team. 20% and climbing upwards now. They will have the rally for the next push and a self destruct the boot. However, looking over on Team Escape, they do have the grab. Can they get something to work from that? They're going to be moving forward, but it's going to be a real tough one, especially with the rally being popped. There's a barrage to combo as well as, and with the team playing Earth so Shatter. close together, they might only need the Earth Shatter. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. And out comes the Dragon Strike with a 4K for Rose. They invested the rally and the self-destruct on the side of Team Owo. They desperately needed that for the recontest. Now they have the Valkyrie. They also have the Barrage. This is huge. Absolutely massive from Team Escape there. And only 50% for Team Owo. They have a huge possibility to get this going. There's many, many things that can stop this push. There's the Transcendence, which will completely deny the pressure. But there's the Yersha on top. Once again, Klodolski going very deep. Put down in no time. Beat Blue with the Rock Barrage. Only picking up Toasty and Coalescence well, used in by Tolino, hoping to get the, them out of the air. Starkill diving in once again. But Loki goes down with a very dangerous res over onto Sensor, who doesn't find anyone with his charge, whilst Logan just picks up two of their team. 
Klodowski once again finding the frontline targets, but a lot of times it's up to Starkill and Logan to hold down the frontline. They're doing it very well. Usually Diva and Zarya don't work so well together because sometimes you'll overlap projected barrels and Diva Matrix. So far, Starkill and Logan, they're playing this perfectly. And Logan throws in the great Graviton at the right time. Klodowski can come up huge with another one of these great Earth Shadows as he will find it in the next fight. That 85% already is a big one, but don't sleep on Censored, who has it now. And there it goes. Two of them are down on the ground, and they get picked up from that as well. Rose making sure that Lucio isn't around much longer either, and Team Escape managing to bring this back. This is actually a very, very good time for Team Escape to bring this one back. Like you say, at 81%, there is potential for recontest even if Team OO do manage to flip this one over. As we saw from the last round, there was an Earth Shadow self struck combo available. Let's see if they can pull that one off again. They did have to invest the Graviton as well as to set it up. But there is potential here. They only really need one good push, and then they can take advantage of how well they play the staggers to take them all the way to 9900 percent yeah, having that stagger with Logan going down early is going to be a tough one for them to get through, but there is a cheeky grab from Fap Lele, and the Dragon Strike to follow it up once again. Synergy over on Team Escape. It's like a pina colada. That, completely. This is a cocktail of ultimates that you do not want to drink. But Team Oo so far, they've been served one up. Now, Toasty, Rally, Cabbers, Sound Barrier as well, as they have so many ultimates to work with here, it would be a shame if they can't contest this one. Beat Blue has to come up huge. Oh, what? Whoa! The buff on Kodolski as he uses his Earth Shadow, not holding him back. Beat Blue comes in with the Rocket Barrage, only finding Kodolski though. That coalescence did a lot of Lucky. work over for Team Owo. Oh my word! That was amazing! Graviton just about pulls Loki out of the Mercy Red Star as well, which will deny that onto Censored, allowing Team Momo to pull this one up. 81% and a lack of ultimates remaining. This is massive. This could be the point, a turning point for Team Escape if they can get back onto the point. But so far, Team Owo looking strong. Team Owo definitely looking strong over here. Right now, ultimates not quite where either team wants them to be, but I can see Rose just ticking up that ult charge right now and not taking much damage here. Here's the contest over onto the point. Very deep in there with Censored, swapping over to the hammer. There's the pile driver. Knocks him up, but no kills converted just yet. He's looking for something. And Loki just healing so much of them. <laughs> what a charge! What a fantastic main tag for Team Owo! And let's see if they can get some more here. This is just a brawl, and there! Graviton comes down, and there's a Dragon Strike shortly after cleaning it up for Team Escape. And this was the major problem that Team Owo are always going to contest with, is if the fight went on for too long, employing the hamster with that extra damage, with that extra health, it was always going to go over to Team Escape if they could sustain long enough. This is only the first map on Li Zhang, and already we have a tie between the two teams. This is... <laughs> this sets a great pace going forward. Let's see who can bring it up here. It really is, and like I said, that was the turning point for Team Escape as they came back into one. They knew exactly what they had to do there to get onto point, sustain it out, get the Graviton, employ that Dragon Strike, very good patience coming up from Rosa to coordinate with Zarya. But now we're coming over to Gardens. It's much more focused around the dive. And looking at dive, you just see right away, team compositions just flicker over to new heroes. And we see Tracer Genji and a more tank-centric um, or more air-centric composition over from Team Escape with the Farah and the Tracer. Farah adds this consistent, slow damage. Genji Tracer, much more quick. So Team Oo, they've got to get in there and be swift on the kills. If they can do that, take out backline targets, it's going to go in their favor. Oh wow, and a bit of a delayed charge in from Fapalele after Sensor jumps in, but that works for them. Although Toasty's in the back line, hoping to just shred Owo down as much as possible. And <laughs> Team Escape seems to be the one getting the point first here. Yeah, it was the key pick onto Tolino there. Tolino going down, it was just such a huge amount of healing loss for the team. Sure, they took down Loken. But it didn't really matter for Team Escape. Sure, they might have needed that extra 30% damage, but the Orb of Harmony is not as valuable as Loki on the Mercy, who now is 50% up towards this Valkyrie. Valkyrie is going to be a huge player going forward to keep the team alive and just keep the fight going. But you see a Pharah swap over for Toasty to try and duel them in the air. I'm excited to see you can come up on top. 
Uh, but already beat Blue. 75% to 16% on Toasty. This is going to mean that possibly Team Escape makes it up to 60% before Team O are even able to flip. Unless they can perform something miraculous. Rosie in the back line. Hoping to pick up Clevers, but the dive comes in from Fapalele and Censored. They're looking what to get direct. something, but Toasty takes Beat Blue out of the sky. A lovely direct here. Rose with the pulse bomb looking for the backline targets. Cabas goes down. Starkill hoping to stop Censored with the Primal Rage, but he's just on the point. I don't think they're going to be able to do much here. And they're going over 60%, but here they are having reinforcements who are going to have to back off from the self-destruct that doesn't actually find anyone just yet. And the fight's quite fractured. Logan fighting against a giant monkey. Logan getting pressure by Beat Blue in the back. Can't quite find that direct does just get it there, but they're still on the point with 74%. Team Escape have played this perfectly. And the Fractured Fight seems to be working in their favor, just chasing down Censored right now. Uh, Klodolski popping the Primal Rage onto the point. This could be Team OO bringing it back with the 2k over there. And Tolino getting Toasty back up. That's really great for them, just numbers-wise. And Logan picks up Rose! A nice oh shot there, word. 95%. Valkyrie only invested with that Primal Rage on top of it. They have the ultimates to deal with the next push, but 93%, it does not look good for Team Owo here. They're coming back in. This time, Team Escape grouping up together, not doing how Team Owo tried to go about it, which was just to stagger the pushes in. And again, Rose is on this flank. Something I just want to point out here, having that infrasight for them just to know exactly where the dive is going to be at any time. Self-destruct coming in from Starkill, doesn't find anyone, but Rose picks up Cabras in the back as well oh as no. Torino! Rose with the... That is... That seals the deal. Absolutely the fantastic. Pops the deal tag on the point. It will be moving over to Team Escape. I don't think Team O will have time. The Transcenders invested from Cabras just to touch it. Oh, and they actually do touch it! Could this possibly be something coming back? Not over time. They actually managed to get on over there with Klodolski over on the Winston. He just wants to last a little bit longer here, and they're holding it bit by bit. Reinforcements are on the way, but not with Faplele just closing the door on them here. Knock and find Star Kill. Star can falls. And the Lucio. Not quite able to touch the point. That will be the first point. Control going over to Team Escape. I uh, must say, quite a fantastic showing from Team Escape. Just looking here, I think Rose definitely deserves a play of the game here. Although this is the Hunza play on Control Tower. Yeah, he was such a big problem for Team OO on Gardens. Always in the back lines, always out the way. They just couldn't lock him down. They did not have the Brigitte. I think maybe that was the time to switch on to maybe a free free with modified Farah Mercy. But they didn't go for it here, uh, which means Rose is able to just run ramp in the background. Sure, Cabra's got the Discord off onto him a lot of the times, but there was no one there to follow up. The front line was always in the front, and Klodolski's aggression, which may have been the boon on the second map on Control Center, was actually the thing that lost them on this map because the back line was never supported. Yeah, and as you said, they're having a Brigitte in that situation would have probably changed, changed things quite a bit there for them. But I must say, I, I just have to give it all to Team Escape there. And it was so, it was such a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle, but having to come on top of it with all that pressure on top of you, that doesn't just take a lot of mechanical skill, a lot of teamwork, but on top of that, just the mental capacity that they have to keep it together as a team and keep the patience that they had there, especially with the drag and grab combos that they threw out there, absolutely fantastic from Team Escape. And the thing you're talking about coordination here, from Team Owo, on the other hand, they played a very strong 3-3, which was very much together, focused on what was in front of them. And on Night Market and Control Center, that's very easy to do because there's only certain positions where a team can come from, can spawn. And on Night Market, there's the right side and the left side. It's very easy to take tabs on. Gardens, however, that opens a lot of flanking opportunities to Team Escape, and it looks like Team Owo unable to deal with this fractured push. Mm. Yeah, I, I must say that, especially on Gardens, when the fight was quite fractured, you saw Team Escape fractured but able to come out on top, but I, I must say that Team Owo was able to really keep it together there, and as you said, being able to keep tabs of exactly what was happening there, it was very close for them to come back in multiple fights there. 
Exactly. Cabas, I think he had it on lockdown. He knew where the tracer was. He popped the Discord orb, probably calling for support a lot of times, but just didn't quite follow up. We are now moving up the Watch on Travolta. A lovely map, very vertical. It means that so many different comps can be played here. I'm excited for this one, Cloudburst. Uh, I am too. I absolutely love watching Watchpoint Gibraltar just because how much your the map changes as you go through the map. Each point is a completely different dynamic to it. And as you said, there's lots of verticality, so there's lots of ways to utilize that. And I think I'd have to give it to you to talk about what compositions you might be expecting. Well, Watchpoint Gibraltar at the moment, very much you have the Ryan Zarya centric kind of play. On first point, you move over to Winston D for second for this more divey to get to the high ground, take down any aggressors from there, and then back to Ryan Zarya final point. My main question here for this map is as we've seen, Team Owo's Ryan Zarya and in the front line is very strong. Kodolski's a lovely aggressive Reinhardt, perhaps needs to play a little bit more passive at some time to help his support line out, but I can imagine Team Escape having difficulty pushing through that on first point as we come over to the second if team escape can make it there i think that'll go very quickly over to them as they play dive so very well yeah and i think this rolls back to when we were discussing a bit about coordination and i feel like team escapes coordination is just a little bit over what we've seen from team owo although team owo on their own i think solo players so to speak have been extremely strong so so i mean coming into this first point here looking at the defense I, I, I like what I'm seeing. I like what I'm seeing here with the Widowmaker and the Genji. What do you think about this? It's it's a strong, strong type of defense here. Widowmaker and Genji work so well together because even if the Widow finds the body short, the blue on the Genji will be easily able to follow up on that with the dash, dash in, dash back out again. And this is all down to a lot of counter dive. And instead of playing this Ryan Zarya, they will be playing Winston Diva first point. How they manage the aggression is what's going to win them or lose them. Oh, this Picking up Logan at the start here, Teamscape, I would have actually expected for Timo to back off there. That was a massive pick. That's a lot of their sightline pressure gone. And now Timo will have to back off a little bit and Team Escape can go a bit more aggressive, taking control of his high ground. And that's what they do, censored up there, just trying to fight off Toasty and Klodolski, but Klodolski is hoping to jump onto someone soon as soon as he gets his health back up. Rose on the back fuck at the moment can't quite decide whether to go for the tank line or keep his sight lines on Logan. Looks quite tough once again. Fight quite split up. I think this is where Team Escape kind of excels. Just jumping. There we go. Censored waiting for the jump just to jump onto Logan for Rose to pick him off. Love that synergy. A little bit of help from the monkey there, has the Orb of Harmony as well, so he's gonna stay alive for much, much longer. And there is the coordinate dive. Logan just about finds Rose as he's res back up again. So now it'll be all down to the tank line of Team Escape, but it looks like Team Owo, they will reset. And having to reset here, I mean, the momentum that they're losing, I can tell you right now, not quite what they want in their minds. Not at all. Logan in a bad spot, not able to put the damage down to the enemy team. He is being boosted up though by the Mercy, but once again, this tank line from Team Escape, they're holding down the high ground so very well. Censored able to push in so many times with the Orb of Harmony and Mercy Link on him, which is giving him that full 80 HPS per second. And here's the blade. And there we go, Dragon Blade coming out. We do have Soft Struck ready on Fapalele, but Beat Blue seems to be just taking them out. Kudolski in the back line manages to pick up Locken, and JZX also picks up Censored. Locken gets back up from Loki, but it's not quite enough. Primer Rage also being popped, but the Discord is holding Kudolski back quite a bit. Not at all as he chases down Locken, and they get to push it forward a bit. There we go, Locken coming out with the Transcendence. He managed to survive the onslaught of the monkey, and they keep it together a little bit longer. A questionable transcendence, however, Toasty with the Genji Blade will be able to come into this one, supported by the Valkyrie, bumping up that blade slash to 156 oh, total Logan. time. Logan finds Rose, however, this could be the big opening for Team Owo. Rose is back up though after that fantastic shot from Logan. Let's see if Team Escape can keep it together. Of course, without the resin coming into this fight. 
Fapalel will have to use that self-destruct to zone the Genji as soon as he pulls the blade. That's why they're holding on to Primal and the Diva Bomb, not using them aggressively, but centered finding Toasty T. He is res back up, and with only one minute remaining, Team O will have to make a move, and they have to make it fast. Oh, they're ready to do, and there the Dragon Blade comes out as the dive straight onto Lokum, takes him down, and Loki goes down two rows, turning around, picking up Toasty mid Dragon Blade. It's a lovely play from him, but here we go. Or, or is it JZX just at the top there looking for some more and Sensor not looking too healthy on the point there. Logan drops the Infrasight, make sure they know exactly which choke Team Escape will be coming through. And it's working for them. Beat Blue is looking for some more dashing in there. But right now, Timo seems to be coming out on top of this fight as JZX tries to clean it up a bit, but Klodowski takes it from him. A very good hold of the high ground by Team Escape. Finally, point one will go over to Team Owo, but they have secured themselves a lot of time wasting on the side of that team. So Team Escape, they're going to be pretty happy with this one. And they're just going to be holding very much forward. Just whilst the payload is moving through the front gate, they have time. Yeah, you can see, trying to just poke them down a bit, but Team Owo got a bit aggressive, losing Klodolski oh, there. And Rogan goes down to Rose. Oh my word. <laughs> JZX takes down Loki. We'll put a dent in the push for the time being, so they will continue to push around this corner. Lockant coming up to the Transcendence. Toasty not quite got that Genji Blade either. Oh, he has a self-destruct though, and it doesn't manage to find anyone, but it does push them back even further. Toasty is Primal just about rage. there. <laughs> Primal Rage from Klodolski at this time. Look how far they managed to push the points in this time. Such great positioning, proactive positioning from Timo to push so far forward. Here's Toasty oh, T, two blades out. Two blades out. Which one's going to come out on top right now? Kappa's first one to go down. Beat Blue takes out Toasty. That is the blade that will pierce the heavens. And he manages to take him down. And two samurais clashing against each other. In this case, Toasty T will be the loser. They honorably will salute. Now back to the point where JZX can stagger out. So very, very close to point B. Timoa have already put themselves in a great stead, but with only the Valkyrie remaining. Not much on either side. The added healing in the next mechanical fight could be the thing that tips them over the edge into point C. I could definitely see that playing a huge factor, but I just want to talk about Rose with such consistent <laughs> shots. Of Cab course. As I say it, there, Cabos goes down. Caster's cursed once again. He does have Infrasight ready as well, but Logan's the one to pick him up! Oh, does no. jump back out again. Two shots perfectly lined up. Loki going down as well as that's terrible. Toasty T looking for more targets, but Fapalel does find Klodowski. Oh wow, and <laughs> Logan getting stuck in the front line there, trying to keep it pushed forward. The strategy where they just play so far forward, not quite working for them anymore. They have to reset once again. A little bit of an overinvestment. As soon as their main tank went down, there was no one to take the brunt of the force in the front lines. And only with Tolina and Toasty T, things are looking rough. As you can tell, Toasty T was just playing all the way to the bitter end. Needs to get some more charge up towards that Dragon Blade, knowing it's probably the last ditch attempt. Again, Vapalel, Primal Rage, also ready to sense it. This is what will push him back. This will, is what will bend the blade. Oh, and there we go, Sensor dives in, Klodowski far in the front, he wants to stop the push right away, and he does go down, Rose picking up Tolino, kind of holds the fight back really already, self-destruct, not picking up anyone, but keeping them off that point, and Logan is popping off as Beat Blue comes out with the blade, he's looking for some more, and he's managing to get it as well, Toasty T uses the blade, but he ends up going down in no time, and there it is, Team Escape. Allow Toasty T to get so very much forward. It looked like he had positional advantage, but as soon as he got himself in that position, Lock and Pops the Transcendence, baits him in, and he's forced into a corner waiting whether he should pull the hilt or just stay put. In this case, he will go down, thwarted at point B. Now, just the pressure that Team Owo had to fight against there, and the pre I guess it would be better to say the pressure that they're actually fighting in. They had to get on the point, it was in overtime, they had no other choice, and then Team Escape was just there to collapse on them in absolutely no time at all. They were playing pretty much on the back foot a lot of times, they couldn't quite get in. Logan always finding these picks onto, sorry, Rose finding rather the picks onto Logan or shutting things down. Logan coming up a little bit too late in a lot of fights, sure he found a lot of those picks, but by this time a lot of times Kodolski, JZX, 
very dangerously low already and that just puts a dent in your push when you need that frontline pressure from those two tanks to create space for your dps at the moment team escape just seems to be playing it much much stronger yeah and i must say the target prioritization coming in from rose always picking up cabas before the fight start at the last fight there picked up Tolino before Tolino could even get any healing on any of the allies there I, I have to give it to rose once again just playing to their outs it's flashbacks of Li Zhang tower right a lot of times these healers will go down because kladolski and jzx very much too focused with getting the front line mm -hmm. taking down rose on the enemy team pressuring onto Locken. And instead, what they should really be doing is pulling back here and playing it slowly, allowing Toasty to farm up towards that Dragon Blade and then going in as a group. I think that that's a very good point, especially with what we saw from Team Escape on Lijiang, having that patience to time, especially on Control Tower, to time those ultimates really nicely. I would love to see that from Team Owo. And as you said, play it a bit slower. Get the patience, patience out there and win from the control that you're able to provide there. They do push themselves into awkward situations, giving all the time Team Escape the advantage with ults. No, it will hold high ground, just as Team Escape did to them. How will Team Escape potentially contest the high ground here? Oh yeah, there the jump comes up, but Santa doesn't isn't able to get onto the top there, and he's gonna have to back off a bit, but they are going through the car wash. Is Owo going to be contesting inside the car wash, or they're just gonna let it go? Tolino. Still in the background, getting onto Kladolski on the high ground. Does go in far too aggressive, gets caught out with the Discord orb on top of him. And Jed, Jed, Jed ZX just not there available with the Diva Matrix. Yeah, and Rose doing very well once again. And Logan trying his best to pick them up, but gets Papalele out of the mech. It's not enough. Rose is the one to take him out, and they're pushing this very confidently. Kladolski, sure he has the mechanical skill to take down targets, but when you're throwing yourself into four members, not calling out to JZX when you're going in, of course you're going to go down in that situation. Yeah, definitely a bit more of a conducive team team composition they need here to keep things together through the comms, but there comes a self-destruct and not quite fighting anyone, but it is keeping them off the point a little bit longer. That stall could possibly be what they needed. <laughs> and they're just sitting them doing here. Now, they can't get through anywhere. They finally push through to point B, and five minutes in the time bank. It's almost as if they've been in the casino and they're coming out with a huge <laughs> amount of cash remaining. Now, Baylo coming through. They're so happy with this. All they need to do now is force out ults from the side of Team Owo, and then push it on through. And unlike a casino, there's no luck involved here. It's all skill, baby, and they are pushing through. Now, onto the high ground. JZX, forced downwards. Censored on the high ground, looking for Toasty T. Uh, and dropping. here we go, onto the point. Fidelski jumping in deep once again, but he pops the Primal Rage this time. You have four players from Team Escape trying to take him down. He's basically a raid boss, and they managed to get him down. Where's the loot? Indeed, finally Kladolski falls, but it will be censored in the front. The true raid boss in this situation, so much HP. How long will he be fighting this guy? And Team Owo taking so much damage. Oh, and over here, Logan trying to get that one. Toasty popping his Dragon Blade, not finding anything, allowing for Beat Blue to be the real samurai in this situation, coming out with his Dragon Blade and hoping to pick up some more. But the stagger is working well for them. Rose popping off. They'll hit onto it, regardless. <laughs> They're not escaping from that one, are they? <laughs> not at all. Taking it convincingly on Gibraltar. You know, they don't call him censored for no reason, as he completely silences the entirety of Team Owo there, playing so incredibly well in the front line, aggressive when needs be, pulls back to the support lines whenever. This man is a real, real linchpin for Team Escape. And as you said, Owo unable to escape it. What are they going to be doing here as Team Escape are staring this down two maps up? We're going to throw this one back to the desk for the time being. They're going to take the breakdown on it. Panda, plausible. Take it away. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, so those those were certainly some matches. Team Escape uh, completely dominant, it seemed. Panda, I, I want to kind of get your overall impressions of what we saw from both of those teams in, in Map 1 and Map 2.
Well, you know, right at the right at the beginning of the entirety of it, we had on Night Market. It was pretty interesting to me personally because let's not forget that Owo was sitting there looking really, really good all through control, especially when they pulled out the 3-3. Most of you know it at home by a certain animal. I'm not even going to start with that whole endeavor. However, once the download started to come around the side of escape, to Blank's point, Owo were unable to escape it. They had the download fully complete walking into Gibraltar, especially. The tank lineup, especially censored, was a spectacle to watch, just always suppressing space and always having that available for uh, Team Escape's Widowmaker just to do as they please, finding body shots, finding headshots, popping infrared sights. We were losing our minds down there just talking about it. It was really nice to see how Rose was just able to come to life by way of tank play coming out of Escape. Possible, and it, it does seem like the kind of the theme of control center was that graviton into dragon strike it felt like almost every minute on the dot we were getting grab dragon strike you know 4k 5k how how was it that team owo wasn't really able to do much against that constant combo from team escape well, it's hard to do anything against that combo uh, unless you have uh, Transcendence to back it up. They didn't have a Transcendence because they weren't running a Zenyatta. Uh, it's hard to live through that combo if it's well executed. And they didn't have that same follow-up with the Goats because they couldn't quite get the self-destructs timed with the Gravitons because in Goats, that is your big heavy, this is how we kill the entire enemy team combo. And they weren't able to pull that off Escape was just able to pull Dragon Strike, Graviton, Dragon Strike, Graviton, team fight after team fight, with nothing to uh, block it on the other side. The Gravitons weren't being eaten by uh, Starkill, who was th playing the D.Va at the time, and that's really the only saving grace they would have had. Yeah, let's not forget that the strongest part about 3-3, or to your point, GOATS as well, is that when they find a target, you're supposed to just run it over. But the hardest part about Control Center in particular is when you don't have the setup from the tank ultimates, the Earth Shatter, or the Graviton Surge, bigger bomb combo that you were just mentioning, Plausible, is that you can't hold up to that door. You can't hold around that space nub there towards the front door in the enemy spawn, more or less, because they're just going to walk in with their own and have more support charge than yours because obviously they've been taking more damage. They just lost the previous team fight. You need to be careful of those kind of type things and set yourself up a little bit more promptly on the point, rather. And that's exactly what happened, right? At, at, at that, uh, the, after the first take from Owo, they charged straight to the choke point and had nothing to back it up. That's right. So where do you think, uh, Panda, where do you think Team Owo needs to improve in this regard? Of course, they are down 2-0 right now to Team Escape. What do they need to be doing to get back into this? Well, there's a, there's a multitude of uh, things at play here as well. I mean, they're losing the tank battle for sure. There's more space being provided uh, by way of censored rather than Klodolski has to be a little bit more intimidated that even on Winston that was actually Rose's primary target, just always clicking the big head of a main tank can definitely put a lot of pressure on him. Rather, set up a certain amount of methodical play for yourself and just to not take that much pressure. But it also comes down to the rest of the team. They seem to really struggle when they're not playing this 3-3 composition that when we first saw on Gardens, uh, we actually saw, was it Logan coming out on the Widowmaker, actually getting heavily suppressed by a fair of all things. It's just a little bit of uh, compositional problems that I could see coming out from the team. But hashing it out, coming off of these two maps in particular, I expect them to make it come back here in Assault. So then, of course, we did move on to Gibraltar, which was uh, essentially Rose clicking heads at all times. Logan on Team Owo as as um, their sniper, as their Widow, made a valiant effort against Rose on Widowmaker. But plausible, it just seemed like Rose was everywhere at once clicking faces. Well, and like uh, Panda was saying, Rose was enabled far more by his tank line, right? Uh, Kodolski and... Je uh... What's the t player's name? Sorry. JZX. Uh, JZX. There we go. I knew it was JZ something. Um, they, they, a lot of the times they were too far out to actually be able to help Logan acquire the space needed. Whereas Rose always seemed to be in the perfect position synergizing with the, the line of sight provided by his tank line. 
Gibraltar itself is one of those have is one of those more dive eccentric maps. You know, obviously three three wouldn't necessarily play out. Well, let's not forget that that was actually Owo's choice. So they felt confident enough to take the dive to Team Escape in that regard. Maybe not so much in the fact that they couldn't come up onto that Widow 1v1 more or less. And to my previous point on what they can improve on in that sense, it's just to go true dive as well. Grab a Genji. Even if your Widowmaker is stronger than your Genji, just give something more to help Klodolski come alive there on the tank 1v1 because he definitely needed some help. Every time that he was stuck in a corner against Censored, he was just sitting there, proper bubble play as well. Just the little fisticuffs that Winston's like to do on top of their tickle cannon definitely gives a, a strong amount of burst damage. All right, map three is do or die right now for Team Owo. Uh, Pauseable, what do you what do you think uh, they're going to need to do to save themselves from taking that second L? Well, first of all, I hope they're taking us to Horizon because based on the uh, dive we just saw from them versus the dive of Team Escape, I don't know if Temple of Anubis is going to work out for them. The, uh, Horizon can favor the tank-heavy comps that they seem to show some light on, that they seem to sh really shine with. Uh, Anubis, I think they're going to struggle on. All right, Panda, last word before we get into map three. For Team OO to definitely uh, come out here in a stronger fashion, they're actually going to be substituting Starkill back in for JZX, so expect a little bit more of a Ryan Zarya play coming out here. I want to see Starkill flexing over to the Zarya Specialist that we have seen here in our notes, and I want to see some Fat Graviton Surges being set up for the rest of his team to come through on. More particular, I want to see Toasty step up to the plate and pick up a little bit of the slack that the DPS need to here on Assault, because we know Dragon Blades can be very strong here, and we know Dragon Strikes going into a Graviton Surge, as previously saw on other maps, are are also very good they just need to pull it together and certainly they do because if they lose this map it is game over we are going to give it over to our casters blank and cloudburst it is all you for map three thank you so much cookie b and the analysts what a fantastic wrap up there blank do you think that Klodowski is going to be able to take his proficiency with designing lego to build up the reverse sweep that team OO needs Oh, this is the thing. Everyone knows that Lego is the strongest material. And Klodowski's told us in his notes, yeah, like you say, Fabus, he designs Lego all the time. The question is, can he be steadfast like Lego? Can he come back? Can he have that foundation? Needs to be less aggressive here, especially on Anubis. If you lose that point A, then oftentimes point B will go straight across to the attacking team just because ult advantage is a huge thing there. Toasty T beat Blue. A lot of time, Mike Panda saying Toasty T is losing out in those situations and those instances. Beat Blue just being a much better projectile player. We've seen glimmers of hope from Toasty T, though, Cloud Burst, and we want to see more of that. I feel like if Klodelski and Starkill can keep it together and Starkill can show us some of what he showed us on Lijiang Tower, I think that Toasty T is going to be able to do what he needs to do in those situations. And coming over to Temple of Anubis here, they really need to get it together, especially with Plausible opting to say that maybe Watchpoint Gibraltar, I mean, not Watchpoint, sorry, Horizon Lunar Colony would have been a better situation for them here. Yeah, well, you know, I do agree with Plausible. I think the way the OO play is very much as a team, as a center, as a unit, marching forward and then just basically winning out in mechanical, winning out on the sustain. It's just unfortunate they would pick onto Anubis, which is very much a dive centric map which already it would seem that Team Escape has showed us their like ability to perform on. Now, Team Escape, they move over to more of this, uh, I believe they are on defense. I could be wrong. But we're, we're just taking yeah, a look team, at the... Yeah, Team Escape is on defense. They haven't swapped sides, yeah. opting to not have that, which I think maybe Team OO would have actually been happier to swap sides, change things up a bit, kind of... <laughs> yeah, set the pace, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> they, need to, they need to set it, but hopefully Klodolski is going to be able to do that for their team. Yeah, well, so this is what we want. Klodolski at the moment on the Genji. I don't believe that. Not one bit, young mister. You will switch up that <laughs> as soon as possible, I hope, at least. We don't know yet. Already, though, we are seeing the picks from the side of Team Escape. They're running straight counter dive here. They've got Loki, Locken. You would have thought that Mercy and the Zenya aren't great at counter dive. However, they support each other in turn. If Loki's being pressured, you can pop the Orb of Harmony on the Mercy. And if Locken's been pressured, obviously the link goes over that side. And with Discord Orb, Zenyatta's are usually very, very happy to take fights with big tank lines. Beat Blue 
on the junk crap. Obviously, that trap is so much of an accessory to that counter dive, will stop players from just rushing in. But already, we're seeing this free free all over again. Yeah, interesting to see 3-3 over on Anubis here. Right away, Starkill dives and just tries to knock Rose off the top there, but not quite able to. However, Rose isn't able to find the hits that he needs either. B blue, not quite finding the percentage that he absolutely needs here. That Riptide is so essential, but Kaba's going down will completely destroy the positional advantage that they had before. Wow, come on, Rose. Uh, and then Rose just completely picking out player by player. As soon as Cabos goes down, he's able to do this. Once they got on point, they absolutely had to leave Cabos up there. The extended healing from the healing aura would have been huge if amped it up. They also needed the speed boost to move around the point, get into a better position to combat the blue. Without that, they were just kind of sitting ducks in the water. And once again, Rose just popping off. He sees the eyes. He puts bullets through them. A marksman of note, Rose is. Gonna have to see what can be done here. No changes just yet over on Timo Wo, but Tolino is pretty c close to that coalescence, and Moira charges it up extremely quickly. Sensor still holding down. Tolino coming with that coalescence will be extremely huge, especially on the small aperture coming through right side. There's the there tire. is the tire. Oh, and there we go, a D-Mech. That is pretty good for them. Not the best, but Rose turns it into the best situation, picking out Logan, <laughs> and just bit by bit being picked apart. Timo, whoa, you need to keep it together. There's just huge damage coming out from Rose on this side so far. Centered, always in the right position with the shield. He just stays static on this high ground, positions the shield to keep Loki, Loki and Locken alive, and then Rose just does the rest. Yeah, it's... I'm actually not too sure what we have to see from Team OO for them to bring this one back. As I said, Tolino is ready with the Coalescence now. But having the Infrasight go over to Rose, this could spell doom for Team OO. Yeah, they can't get through anywhere. And with the damage on top of him, that's Tolino oh, down. Word. That's a massive pick. That's so much healing removed from them. Toasty and Cabas on the Lucio Brigida combo can't output the same healing combined as one Moira can, so they're gonna have to wait. And one minute 36 remaining. This is looking dire. A dire situation that they're gonna have to come out on top. Can they escape? Team escapes. Assault here. Coalescence coming out, hoping to get something they want to. Are they gonna go forward? They're gonna go through the room here. Here they go through the choke points on the flank. Team Escape adapting quite quickly, moving to the back of Rose. Oh T is down and a self destruct invested. Self can't find anything. There we go. It gets Cabas off the corner of the shield. Fapalele, look at that aim of the mech being thrown out there. And Rose. Rose just cleans it up. Oh my god. Rose bunked out the way, but he finds Kodolski as well. And Logan. Grass grows, birds oh fly, god. and Rose, he kills people. Oh, I, I don't even have anything to say here. Rose leaving us speechless and just, just blooming. Absolutely. Logan, he has the Graviton. There's the Bigger Bang combo available. This will be it with only 36 seconds remaining. They have to make this work. Oh, there the tie comes up from Beat Blue. Who's it going to find? It's taking quite a slow route here. There we go. It gets Klodowski. Logan goes down to lock and Starkill does dive in there with Toasty though. But having Toledo go down is going to make it almost impossible for them to keep up this assault. Toasty is on the point there with Starkill. And oh, there we go. Sound barrier does come out here hoping to work with the rally. They're keeping it together by just a thread. But Rose is on the corner there looking for something after that res. Klodowski is in his sights. Logan still looking for some more. Rose might be going down here as we enter overtime. Rose, John Sanders coming I'm up self. to lock in. Oh yeah, Rose going down is not a good situation for Team Escape right now. Beat Blue swapping over to the Doom first, hoping to really get some damage in, but Starkill shuts the door on that one. And Team O in overtime managed to get the first point of Team of Anubis. Finally, Team O, -O they come up huge. Lovely Graviton placement from Logan, actually. I love the way he positioned that. Meant that there was no grapple available from Rose to get out of that one. And they just dominated him on that high ground. Now they can come into second point. Quickly beat Blue, switches off. Rose now onto the junk crowd as well as... Vapalel, he only has the self-destruct. And Kladolski, so far as we've seen Cloudburst, has been extremely proficient on this Earth Shadow. Yeah, Kladolski definitely laying that foundation that they needed. Earth Shadow rippling through Team Escape's defenses. 
Big problem though for them, Cloudburst. Like, Earth Chat, it's in the, in the name. You have to be on the Earth. Whereas the entire team escape are just handling it on the high ground. Just avoid it completely. Just play where they can't hit you. Here comes the dive from Censored down into the backline. Sadowski's the one who's going to be standing behind to kind of fight him off. Over on the point here, we do have Beat Blue ready over on the Brigitte. Gets the stun on Kladowski. Loki's keeping him alive, but it's not going to be for long. With Censored jumping in there, there's the Earth Shatter. Only gets Censored though. That bubble keeping his team alive. Can Tolino. they find more? Oh my word, Tolino going down to Rose with a headshot! And managed to keep Team Escape's defense going, with Kappa's going down as well, breaking apart Team Oh whoa. And they invested so much, and after the switches off for Team Escape, they were looking pretty bad coming side of the ultimate, but now they've got the ultimate advantage as Team Owo invest practically everything. They were on an expensive shopping trip, and it didn't quite work out. It's not a dine and dash right now. Keeping up the momentum, not quite able to with Teamscape holding the back and Rose picking up Logan is a massive pick, keeping that resurrection off of them. Yeah, Tolino a lot of times having to invest his resurrect on Kogolski after he goes very deep, often finds finding a kill. But now Tolino, 30 seconds on that res means they won't have it for this push coming in. However, Valkyrie does get popped in from Tolino. He wants to keep the team alive. They're opting to still go through the flank over here. Toasty on the Genji, very close to the Dragon Blade. Logan all by himself in the back line will be taken down by Fat Palal. And now the Valkyrie there as well as. Oh, Dragon Strike coming in over onto them. Takes out Cabras, completely keeps Klodolski out of position there. Primal Rage coming out as well from Censored as they find some more with Beat Blue just running through Team Owo. Here's a reset with only a minute 30 left on the clock. They do hold on to a few things. Logan switches off the Brigitte now to better combat this front line from Fapalel and Censored. They will hold on to the Dragon Blade and the Graviton. They only need one good push, especially on Anubis here. Graviton and then Dragon Blade. And if they do need it, Transcendence to keep the Dragon Blade alive. Toasty T, he's got to find those picks, and so far, he's just not been able to slice and dice this team. Yeah, I think we're going to have to see a very well-coordinated dive coming in through from Team Owo over onto Team Escape here. <laughs> Censored. Like Panda says, he's got the Tickle Cannon available. <laughs> And once again, opting for the high ground, of course, backing off now. They just want to wait for them to go to the point. I don't think they know that they're ready with the grab just yet. This could spell doom for them. There's the grab. There's two of them down. Loken low does pop the transcendence. Hopefully, the Dragon Blade will come out and do some work. There we go. Toasty in the back line with the Dragon Blade. Hoping to get Beat Blue and Loken. And he managed to get Loken wow. and Loki. That is it. I cannot see Team Escape come back from this Dragon Strike, though, on the point. Not quite finding anyone <laughs> Fapalele. Hoping for some more. Tolino, Tolino takes out Rose! <laughs> now moving it up. Fapalele just about gets the player as the hamster moves the Reinhardt out of the way, but they can't touch it. Team Owo just about get it. I think that might have just been before overtime, which will be very, very good for Team Owo, enabling a second push. Yeah, 13 seconds left on the clock. I mean, it's not much, but that might be just what they need to keep this reverse sweep or to kickstart it would be the right way to say this. Yeah, the momentum might be shifting at this point. We are going to get a quick replay on the blade. He does circumvent the Brigida on Team Escape, which was his biggest problem, and then finds Locken and the uh, Mercy as well as Toasty been so very very strong here yeah i must say toasty definitely as we were saying before the match started he's the one who needs to turn things around for their team and kludelski opened it up so that he could do so over onto the defense here for timo were though i'm not too sure they're going to be able to deal with the pressure that teamscape is able to push over onto them so, from what we've seen on the previous two maps it was nice to see kludelski on the point playing a lot more defensively there to prevent Basically, because um, a lot of times we see him quite aggressive, right? Him playing yeah. defensively almost opened it up for Toasty because he could play around the space that Kladolski was bringing uh, and not have to worry about Kladolski basically stealing his role as DPS. And looking at the, the composition here now, once again, Logan is looking to duel with Rose. Kladolski over on the Risa, as you said, playing more defensively. This is where we see it compared to the 
aggressive Reinhardt we've seen, the dive over on the Winston, he's really pulling it back here, and I think this is exactly what they needed. Yeah. He's an extremely good player. Like, it's undoubtable. I mean, the Graviton went down. He knew to immediately pick out the Brigitte in the grab to open it up for Toshi T so he doesn't have to worry about the Shield Bash as he comes down with the Dragon Blade. He knows what he's doing. I think he's just playing a little bit too aggressively, and that's Beat Blue, the bird dropping out of the sky. Yeah, Logan just pot shotting up there. Is this clay shooting? <laughs> I think it might be, but there's no dog to retrieve the body. I mean, that'd be pretty morbid, right? <laughs> He's picking up Pharaoh off the ground, <laughs> which I'm sure is exactly what Team Escape is trying to do here with the swap over to the Brigitte. No, they'll be coming through. This is all about getting to the point safe and sound. They do not want to have a repeat of what Team Oo had to deal with with their. Lucio went down early. Toasty T desperately trying to get this Riptire. Oh, and the D-Mech over onto Starkill is actually spelling doom for them already. They need to find a way to get hold of this. And right now, having Toasty on the Junkrat, here the tire comes. And there we go, picks up Censored. That breaks their front line. Can they get through here? And oh, this is a tough one for them. Beat Blue looking low with the Discord Orb on him. There he does go down. Toasty finding the grenades with direct hits here. A reset over on Teamscape. Yeah, they really wanted to reset early there. Finally, Loki finds his way out the fight. Rose on this Zarya. This is fine for them, though. They really just switch all off here. They want to have as much damage as possible. I don't know if Rose will stick on this one. No, goes over the Tracer. This is just full dive now. They want to get them off this perch on the high ground. Kladolski has been forced to drop down. Doesn't have the Symmetra anymore to get him up there. Now, they can take this nice and quickly. Try find Logan. Oh, oh Logan. Lucky Logan finds them, I guess. Yeah, having that Infrasight worked so well, they knew there was a Tracer, and as soon as Logan showed his face, taken out in no time. Brought back up again now. Bapalel and Censored. They have to play this correctly if they are to remove Logan from up here. Yeah, taking through the flank here, we do see Censored over on the Winston, as he's done so well in it. Halt trying to Toasty. do some work there. Toasty falls! A right click from Logan! Oh my word, look at them diving onto the high ground here, picking up Logan in no time. Beat Blue is the one to be watching right now. Just trying to keep himself alive a little bit. Tolino's the one to keep the rest of the team alive with Coalescence being popped up from Cavers. They're keeping it going for a little bit longer, especially with Toasty mentioned to make it back into the fight. Transcendence was invested there, kept them all alive. They wanted this push to be expensive for Team Owo, but really, all they had to invest was the Transcendence and the Infrasight. Valkyrie also pops her few ultimates away from them. Rose can put this pulse bomb. 1 minute 15 now, Cloud Burst. Really, Team Escape have to show some of that proficiency that they had on Gibraltar. I can imagine both teams right now sweating as the clock ticks each tick <laughs> of the clock changing the pacing that they have to bring it in with it gets more and more intense as you go and beat blue might be the one to take it out but here we go the tire from toasty coming on the side looking for a player it does oh, find it. two but Fapalel oh, the returns trade. oh my word such a burden of tire from toasty but Fapalel turns it around to the self-destruct loki gets beat blue back up though and kodolski needs to keep it alive over on the point pulse bomb does take him out rose Playing very well again, and they managed to take the first point. Transcendence used from Locken here, a little bit questionable. I don't know if that was a misclick. Probably won't switch off. They really did actually need that on the next push through to get some more ultimates available for the team and remain in the fight. But like you're saying, both teams sweating. Finally, team escape. They wipe the brow. Yep. <laughs> They must be breathing quite deeply right now. Logan switching over to the Reaper, hoping to find something as soon as they dive in here. And there we go, Censored taking all the damage from those shotguns and getting chased, chased down from Starkill. Managed to find the kill. Loki also not too healthy there, gets taken down in no time and they keep this together. Thapalel desperately looking for this Ness self to struck. The zoning capabilities from that ultimate will open up space for Beat Blue to unleash the blade. Loki. 47%, lock and 50%, so no one near towards the supportive ultimates wherever. Cabas and Tolino, they've both got those coming online so very shortly. 
I can imagine Logan must be very unhappy with himself over here, not having that transcendence right now. However, Beat Blue popping out that <laughs> Dragon Blade picks up Cabos going down. However, Starkill turns it back into their backline alongside Toasty picking up another two. Can they keep this going? I don't know, because Rose is having to back off when Logan takes down Loki. That was a perfect, perfect opportunity for Team Escape. Beat Blue maybe pulled the trigger a little bit too quickly there. He does find one kill onto Kappa's 96% towards that transcendence. He knew he had to go quick. Now, they make the switches. Beat Blue onto the far rows onto Hanzo. Beat Blue is the one to watch out for, though. He has this consistent damage coming out from the rockets, the directs, with the help of this co-pilot Mercy in the skies. And I, I need to see what they can do here coming Hello. in. Having... Kludelski go down so early. This is looking great for Team Escape in the result right now. Logan swapping over to the McCree to take the birds out of the sky. Doesn't find anything from the self-destruct, so that will go down. Star Kill doesn't have the self-destruct available to take down Loki and Beat Blue. Beat Blue, no healing remaining for her now as Loki goes down, just 3% shy of that Valkyrie. Oh, and Toasty popping the rally after Sensor has jumped in there. Here's the self-destruct. Can it find anyone? Oh, and Toledo! It's Toledo at the back! This is Team Escape's moment to shine. Can they keep this going? Right now, Toasty looking to take them up. Logan goes down to Fapalele. Starkill picks up Censored and the Dragon Strike keeps them off of that point. It's just ticking up for Team Escape. Contested right now, they have one part of this one. Can Rose damage boosted? Keep taking out Starkiller and Kodolski. Tank Buster. Hanzo manages to do it, but Kodolski is just alive. Just keeping him alive from Toledo right now. He's and so dangerously fight. low. Oh, and so dangerously low indeed and toasty over there with the Doomfist hoping to get something Rez coming out to Klodolski and it actually lands Toledo still healthy in the skies right now Fapley picks up Logan interesting swap over to the Bastion and this is just an all-out brawl there Rocket Barrage hopes to find something picks up Starkill out of the mech and gets Klodolski as well this is Team Escape turning it around into their favor although the spawn advantage still over on Team Owo can they bring this one back there's the Dragon Strike into the spawn. Quickly trying to get out. Beat Blue lands a lovely direct. And Kladolski just can't get his monkey foot onto the point And mischievously, he's shut out. Absolutely amazing from both sides. Two to two. Oh, 43 seconds difference over onto Team Escape's favor. It's just like Panda says. This is do or die time for either team. No one wants to go two losses down. And Team Owo, they're desperately clinging on, knuckles white. I must say, just looking at this replay right now from Beat Blue, that barrage taking out their front line. Absolutely fantastic play. I love the positioning coming in from there. And in a fray or a frantic fight like that, that was the turnaround for Team Escape. Really was. Locking, getting the transcend as well. Kind of sealed the deal in this case. Was able to keep everyone nice and healthy. And no matter how desperate the switches came off, at that point it was just wasting time. But 1 minute 43 and 1 minute, they're not that far apart. But that 43 seconds could be the difference between failure and success. And right now, failure is looming over Team Owo. They need to kickstart the reverse sweep. And I feel like they've already started it here. Getting Anubis over onto 2-2-2 two -two -two once we thought Team Escape was favored. They're on the attack now. Can they thwart Rose over on the Widowmaker that did so well last time? Is they will move Tolino onto the Sombra now. Hopefully hack down on Fapalel. Prevent him from doing so much work. Cabas onto the Zenyatta. Tolino switches off onto the Mercy once again. They have full dive here, ready to go. Looking for Rose, looking for Beat Blue. And over here right through the front. Can they keep it going? Rose wasn't able to find anyone, and here are the dive starts. Kudelski not managing to get to the top there, but Rose picking up two! <laughs> That's a 2k so early, and this is why we love watching Rose. Now, Logan does find Loki over. A lot of healing pinched away from Team Escape, but Rose still coming out huge. Oh, it just... Watching Rose play there so calm in such an intense fight with so much on the line. And six seconds left. I don't think we're going to see Team OO managing to get onto this point. Logan However, drops back on. Cap. Back cap Logan. Oh, 
it does go down. There, yeah, Klodowski jumps on but dies shortly after Tolino is trying to keep it alive a little bit longer. Starkill is on the point there, but staring down six of Team Escape. And that looks like it will be it. Rose shuts them out. Yeah, Rose just keeping... Rose playing Gatekeeper. Beak Blue taking them out as soon as they get anywhere near. This is going to be an extremely nail-biting fourth round for Team Awoke. Rose, they have to tie it up now. They have to get this draw here if they want to be even within a chance of going forward in this series. Tai will go to Ilios here as we played Li Zhang Tower. They will decide on that one. But first, we need to decide who will win on Anubis, who will draw. I, I can't say I know what's going to come through here. I mean, there's so much that this is dependent on. Can we see the absolutely mental plays coming out from Rose again? Or are we going to see Logan and Toasting cleaning things up behind Klodowski and Starkill? We want insanity from either of these teams. They want something to get onto point. They need it to work. They need something absolutely miraculous. And the only times those kind of things happen is once you delve into the rabbit hole, jump straight down, find this comp that Team O have been lock lacking on. They're on the perch now, Cloud Burst. Can they hold Logan up for that? Or will they forced to drop? One minute 43 for Team Escape. They're going to try and make this one work. Ooh, I, I am just waiting here with bated breath. We're going to see them coming out of the gates now. And Rose over on the Sombra. They're going to have to deal with something they're not expecting. We're just going to get a quick pause in the time being. I think we're waiting for one of the players to come back online. <laughs> Team Owo. Yep. So a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're ready again. Oh, we, we're, we're in a situation that is is very, very, very much sweaty, so to speak, because I don't know who's going to take this one. Team Owo, they've been showing very, very good play on Anubis, much different to what we've seen on the other two maps. There was potential for them to get the foot in, but now is absolutely time for them to shine. We can take a quick look at Team Escape's comp as we go in. Rose on this Sombra, hoping to shut down Kodolski, making sure he can't get any of those shielding off, or even onto Toasty as well as to prevent the damage from the Concussion Mines, the Displacement, or even baiting out that ultimate charge. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a real tough one here. We just saw quite a stop in the momentum that they had there. Possibly time to just take some basic breath. Whatever reason it was, that basic breath is definitely going to help Team Owo out here, able to calm it down a little bit. Into the backline, Beat Blue goes. And Sensor, Sensor jumping already in on there. Them. Oh, wow. Flapalele gets demeked, knocked off the point as well. This could be a possible hold for Team Owo already. Rose was desperately looking on. for Toasty. Oh, wow. Starkill takes up Flapalele, though. Whilst in the mech here, Beat Blue having to back off they still have time for another push with 45 seconds on the clock there'll be one more push but toasty t could shut it down very shortly which is why rose is desperately looking for him knowing that they have to get him out the fight before he gets that riptar available because well, that will put a massive dent in their push if he can just find loki there will be no res available so he's playing very cautiously right now rose dangerously low still survives it 23 seconds, they have to push in, they're going through the top ground, they know they have to find Toasty. And Toasty right now, his ult charge is just ticking up 94%. He's going to be able to get this rip tower at any moment now, as we see Team Escape. There we go, censored, jumping in there. Toasty takes out Rose though, that thwarts their assault a little bit. There's the rip tower and it finds... Fafalele is the one that goes down. Starkill takes out Sensor. Beat Blue is ready to take out Toasty T. Though Supercharger comes out from Kodelski and just keeps it together. There's a res as well. No way for Team Escape to bring this one back. Supercharger was also available, making this fight a lot easier. Well played from Kodelski. Did all that ultimate charge in. Overtime, ticking down. Fafalele desperately trying to get to the point, but there's a self destruct there oh, to no. stop him short. And now we will be going with the Ilios to decide this one now. What a turn of events here, ladies and gentlemen absolutely mental insanity overly intense rose deserves this one oh. let's see infrasite getting popped in this play of the game this is when he just takes out cameras right at the beginning oh toasty goes down in no time and kladowski 
that headshot. This is just, that just shows you exactly how well Rose is able to play this Widowmaker. So now we'll be going with the Ilios to decide this one. There'll be only one point available, and whoever takes that one point, they will take this series if you are Team Escape. Or if you're Team Owo, oh, you'll be holding on for a few more moments to see if you can bring this one all the way back. And seeing our previous match, we went through five maps. Are we going to see it again between Team Escape and Team Owo? Oh, is this going to be one day, two matches for EU, and both teams able to get that? Or are we going to see Team Owo oh, crumble here to Team Escape over on Ilios? That is the real, real question. Depending on the map that we get on Elios, submap could be well, could be Lighthouse. We could even see Ruins. There's completely different comps on either one. If we get Ruins, it's very much heavily in the favor of Team Escape. As we know, Rose can hugely pop off on that Widowmaker. And the Cyclones on Ruins will absolutely allow them to do it. Team Oh, well, more of these unconventional comps. If we see well, potentially... Things could go in their favor. I'm just really not sure. I don't know how this is going to go down, which is why it's so, so very exciting. And you, you, you've got to, you've got to stay here. You've got to watch this all the way to the end. There's, I, I can't imagine anyone wanting to get off their seat here unless you're just quickly going to grab something and come right back because this is Overwatch at its best. This is exactly what we're here for: the intensity between two teams, neck and neck, toe to toe. And hopefully, Team Owo, I would love to see it go to five maps. I hope they're able to bring Ilias back for themselves. I really, really would. I think Team Owo, they have the chance to do it. Everyone on this team playing so extremely, extremely hard to make it work. Toasty T proved himself more than worthy on that final map on the Junkrat. His team was there to support him. It's something we've not seen before with the tank line coming together with the DPS. We had Starkill holding down the choke, allowing just Toasty T to get further and further up towards his ultimate, and then finally unleashed it. Found Falapel, ensuring that he did not get back into mech, and then afterwards it was so easy. Loki was just all by himself on the point as a mercy. Yeah, and I mean, that, that was the end for Loki. I just want to quickly dial it back a little bit and just look at how well the support line of Team Escape has actually been playing here. With oh, yeah. Loki and Loken always ready to go it save for loken using that transcendence it was it looked like a bit of a fat finger i'm sure it wasn't quite intentional but really they've been playing to their outs keeping their team alive i mean rose doesn't go down that often even after being dived at consistently from team owo and censored dives are so nicely calculated alongside fabulele and it's been working great for them so i mean both teams i they're so neck and neck at this point it really is they are neck and neck and both at each other's necks. Both one wants to take down the other on this game of Ilios. Locken, Locky, Beat Blue, Rose, Bapalel, Censored, Cabas, Toasty, T, Klodolski, Logan, and Starkill, Toledo. They're all still in this one. It's all going to oh. be down to this. And just looking at where we'll be going to on Ilios, this is the decider. And here we have Ruins. Tell me about this, Blank. What do you think is going to go down? I, I can't believe we got this one. It was a it was a one in three chance. It's the triple faced coin. And here we are on Ruins. Rose, he's going to be having a field day. Feeling very chuffed with himself. Able to pull out the Widowmaker once more. <laughs> and you already see it. Straight onto it. Beat Blue, we're playing the Hanzo. Also very interesting in this case. Hopefully they can create a crossfire. A lot of lower teams uh, will be playing Hanzo, Widowmaker, and look down the same sight lines, which makes it very easy to coordinate a dive on the enemy team. But Team Escape, I don't think they're one of those kind of teams. They they have the skill. They have the caliber. Now, Logan, he really has to bring up the tempo from Gibraltar to able to basically counter out Rose, be, be the man that's able to take him down or look him in the eye. Yeah, right now it looks like we've got a demigod facing up against a god, Rose being the god here. Let's see if Logan can bring it back on these sight lines. I, I'm just, I'm just going to quickly go with my 2020 vision. I am just waiting for Logan to just jump in there with the grapple hook there, take out Rose and allow for Team Owo to get the point at the start here. That, no, that, that's my that, prediction. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the that's the big question though. Is Logan a lot of times he found those grapple hook kills towards the end of fights when it's not as useful, but already silenced before the storm as both teams center themselves towards the eye. 
now. Toasty on the Roadhog will be doing a lot of damage to the Winston and the Diva, but they will have the Tank Buster Hanzo able to take down this triple tank combo that they are running on Team OO. I love Rose's positioning here, quite a tough one for really for Timo to take it out. Here we go, the brawl starts over on the point. Star kill chasing down Fapalea, but the sensor is there to help him out. Loki a bit overextending there with the flight, but Fapalea takes out Cabras. Loki goes out to Kludolski, and that makes it very tough for both sides. Cabras gets back up, but not having the res for Team Escape. Cabras takes out Beat Blue as well. This is going to be really tough for Team Escape, and we, as we see Team OO take the point at the start here. Timo well, pulling it back still. B Blue does have the Dragon Strike, so they were able to recontest this. They want to get off point as soon as possible, not wanting to feed any more ult charge towards Team Oo. Rose surprisingly switching off from the Widowmaker. B Blue, he butchers his own ultimate charge for a better comp. They switch on the Genji and the Tracer. This did not work versus them on Anubis' final point. See how they can make it work now. They intentionally really want to get to the backline, take down Cabas, take down Logan. I like seeing the positioning coming out from Team OO right now. They don't want to separate the backline and the frontline too much. They're moving as a unit. And here we go, the dive coming from Team Escape. But Logan takes out Loki. This is where Team OO is able to turn things around. Cabas also very aggressive over on the Zenyatta as he takes oh, out to oh. make that three. Toledo does go down to the self destruct, but Team OO keep the point once again. And Fepalel invests the self struck far, far too late. Won't have for the next fight. And 50% in climbing. Let me just remind you guys, this is only one point. 50% oh, away from God. taking Anubis and making this 2-1. And Loki, reoccurring theme. He's died three times the first time so far. He's got to be much more careful. I'll put a pan in front of his face. That's such a tough one. If you look at the sight line that Logan took there, that was a 1 in 100 shot. And Logan was able to take it. Now, Starkill, he'll have to self-destruct online, but 70%. Team Escape, they know they have to do something. And there Logan it is. Logan takes out Logan as he's waiting for the, the flank there. But there we go. Cabas pops out the Transcendence. Let's see if they can keep it together with having two players down right now. Toasty in the front here looking for some more. Kladolski jumps in there, but he is discorded right now. Censored, picks up Cabas. That's their whole backline gone. And Team Escape were able to bring this one back. The dive is good, the dive is strong, and they will finally take it on over, but 92%. This is the tall order ahead of them. But you know what? Team Escape, they've served up before. Toasty T, switch over the Brigitte to counter out on the Genji, and the perfect time as well. As he will be pulling out the blade, so Rose really has to deal with the Brigitte in the background, but even she will have difficulty with that. Logan now on the Genji himself. Locken has the Transcendence. Will they be able to lock this one down? Sensor jumping into the top line here. Logan over on the Genji, hoping to kind of push them off of this one. Dive a bit deeper. Fafnir is so low. Oh no, he gets taken out by Starkill. And there's the Dragon Blade coming in from Beat Blue, but he gets taken out from Logan with just a shift. This is what they need. And Transcendence comes out over here from Logan. Can he keep his team alive much longer? Loki is taking damage, but staying alive. That health bar is jittering back and forth non-stop. Fapalele is ready with a self-destruct if things do get too bad for them here. This was the perfect opportunity for Team OO to make a move inwards, but they will be taken down. Brigida goes a little bit too far. The Discord Orb was applied and censored, able to electrocute her down. Be blue, not able to punch through the armor pack, healing onto uh, Tolino from Toasty T. Kladolski, he'll also have the primal race, hold this one out for a little bit longer. Remember, it's only really one push that Team OO need. Kladolski goes in aggressively, doesn't quite take enough damage. And there he is, popping the Primal Rage, both Winstons, angry as they can be. And there's the self-destruct coming in, doesn't find anyone. And no, it doesn't, but Locken takes out, not one, oh, oh, oh. Logan gets back up from Toledo. He's looking for something here. They're ticking up to 85%. But right now, Team O'Wall are slowly but surely making it through right now. Can they keep this one up? Because Team Escape is still ticking up as they see the fight kind of going to Team Escape's favor. Be blue, favor, though. The, the Dragon Blade. Oh, that... Oh my word. There it comes out from Beat Blue. Any reinforcements are going to go down in no this time. Could be it, this is it. Over time. Black, what am I watching here? As we see them, they can take this 3 0. What an insane match. And what an insane do. match, Clovers. Looking, coming up huge. Pulling up the slack. 
Loki gone down so many times, but Logan, he's there. He's slinging away, and he finds the orb kills. Absolutely amazing. Both Zinyadas stepping it up, being very aggressive, waiting for them to dive on them, and actually getting multiple kills. We saw this from both teams. Absolutely amazing. Look at that play of the game with Kadras popping off, but not quite able to get it for his team, as we do see Team Escape take this 3-0 with an overly intense series. <laughs> one hell of an escape it really was they got the hell out of dodge on that final one team oh looks so extremely strong there they could have taken it but they just weren't able to in the end Loken coming out huge and as i said loki he got the pan out and he got the full armor out and didn't take <laughs> another shot from logan after that <laughs> logan even swapping over to the genji not quite able to bring it out to what they needed there absolute insanity from team escape they were just so invested on in that one i think there was a little bit of a disconnect from team o of what they wanted to do did they want to play brigitte did they want to play free free did they want to play dive and in this case having the additional damage from rose on the tracer to, to be able to remove the backfire remove that discord orb and make things much easier for genji beat blue just yeah, gave them blue. the slight edge yeah and i mean that was so close. I mean, I'm quite sure that was a 98% over to a 99 at a point there. And at any point, Timo could have turned that around. And as you said, just cleaning up, I must say, Beat Blue with that Dragon Blade. What a was, crazy, crazy move there. It was, it was massive. Um, there, there was just so, so many plays today, Cloud Burst, which which was incredible to see. And this is Overwatch at its finest. It might have been a 3-0, but it was definitely not easy at all. This was a super, super close one. And this is what Open Division is all about, showing off these players, giving them exposure on their Overwatch path to pro. Yeah, for the path to pro, I have to give it. I just, I, I have to mention Rose once again. I did not expect to see this caliber of Widowmaker play in Open Division in week three. We're not even that far into it, and we see something this insane. And I don't think the scoreboard gives either team, d doesn't give them what they need right now. But I must say, if we're going to break it down any further, I'm going to hand it over to Cookie B, Plausible, and Panda. Thank you so much. Blank Cloudburst, thank you for your amazing casting, as always. All right, analysts, uh, you know, as our casters were saying, we definitely saw click a lot of faces. But Panda, I want to go right to you. Man, Team Owo, they could only manage to pull out a draw. Why couldn't we see any solid wins from them? I, there was some dis, uh, disconnect never in the end uh, between the support line and the tanks as well. We saw a little bit of overclocked instability i guess you could call it from the support line specifically tonello uh had a hard time on where to be as mercy uh whether to get anchored properly back and forth and in between but i gotta say uh for the end for logan definitely stepping up to the plate a strong Widowmaker. but it seemed to be where the dps needed to be clutch in the certain scenarios they couldn't necessarily just pull out that that last little bit of it cookie they just they just fell up just ever so shortly on coming out on from the draw of temple of anubis and on Elios as well. I mean, Ruins was a was a real good spectacle that we got to see from Control coming off of the uh, the first map that we played here as well. Possible. I'd love to hear from you. So, of course, Panda gave kind of where where Team Owo was struggling. But what do you what do you think you saw from both Team Owo and Team Escape that you really think that they excel at during these games? Oh, I, I think, think he may be muted. muted. The dreaded mute disease is back! We kept it from John, and now it's <laughs> spread over I, the I almost, I almost went a cast without screwing that up. Um, All right, Team OO, Team Escape, what did they do? I think I think both ta uh, both teams had pretty solid tank play when it came down to just how the tank line operated, where Escape really uh, pulled ahead was, like Panda was saying, the connection with the tank line to the other uh, sections of the team. And it, you you could really see that there was one play in particular on uh on that last map Ilios, where uh the the mercy from Owo was going for a resurrection and the tanks were way off somewhere not covering him and uncensored from escape took advantage of that primal raged and bopped him out of the way they couldn't bring the widowmaker back and they lost the team fight because of it.
it's that minor misconnect uh misconnection that i've i was talking about as well you need your supports to be on the same page as your tanks right if the tanks are going in that much further into the team fight you legitimately need your mercy there zenyatta will never be enough healing with the harmony orb to keep any tank alive to get another round of cooldowns you need the mercy there in the sky guardian angel if you will keeping them alive in the midst of all the uh the clown fiesta that was especially on ruins it was a really good play from the primal rage of uh of uh, team escapes specifically for censored uh pulling out at the right moment to cancel out the resurrection but tonello in the final moments favoring the resurrection at the end of the valkyrie to uh get a res on to uh their genji was probably not so much as the play you know that genji was going to come back quicker because of the dash coming out of spawn needed to keep the heals on that tank probably would have been able to get another point flip in there ruins was just so close however it was just a really nice fight to watch Panda, was there any point that you were worried, perhaps, that Team Escape was starting to fall off in that in that third map, which did end up in a draw? If you were wondering if maybe we were going to see a resurgence from Team Owo? Huh. I mean, I I was hoping that my call was actually about to be there too. I mean, we got pushed all the way to Elios, and I was right the the first set of games. I wish I was going to be right uh, another set of games, but you you can't you can't. You can't spearhead all of them, unfortunately, Cookie. But on what I did see, though, was Rose was a little shook, right? I mean, he couldn't get through the barrier, obviously, of Arisa to get to the head of uh, of Logan on Anubis. And I think the DPS definitely struggled in that regard of what hero do we play next. They swapped over to True Dive, and it took them a slow mileage to, or a, a minor mileage to actually gain headway on to figuring out how, how that DPS worked together again. But then the cogwheels started turning. They started really being in the same place with their tanks. And the synchronization, especially led by Censored here as well, Beat Blue and Rose, Tracer, Genji, they looked really good there in the end. And they pulled it all the way through on Ruins, Elios specifically. It's possible. I'm wondering now, of course, Team OWO, everything's looking pretty pretty shaky with a 4-2. and two. That's going to be really, really difficult continuing on in, of course, Season 3 of Open Division EU. Uh, do, you, do you think that there's any hope for them at this point or, or perhaps this may may be the end of a run i mean there's certainly hope for them right i it there's four more matches to play they've already run they've already won four right they just got to win four more uh it, that's certainly an oversimplification of it but they they have solid mechanical work right they have good players who know what they're doing they just need to get everybody on the same page and if they can do that they can probably get to that eight and two which they need to to get into the playoffs panda what do you think i, I think at the same point in time you know uh figuring out which off tank you want to play uh your off tank should be able to feel comfortable on a multitude of roles we see even teams all the way up to the overwatch league struggling when they should be bringing in these zarya specialists or these diva specialists but you even take your tried and true map of king's row diva zarya can be played across the board in a multitude of situations and you don't necessarily need a specialist like that i'm not saying that in between starkill and jzx uh one was more favorable i think both of them made a really strong outing but what that starts doing to your team is is a synergenic issue you need your main tank to always stay on the same page and when you keep swapping out mentalities from your off tank like that you start to run into a struggles from the trust of the support line could be animosity in there as well but we'll never know for sure not being able to listen to their comps unfortunately i just think as a uh, as looking from the outside of the box perspective try to stick with the starting six and, and stick along with that because they really look good on a multitude of situations as well all right and before we wrap things up i would just love to know from both of you possible i'll start with you first who did you think your mvp was oh rose that's not even a question. <laughs> Rose was so dominant on that Widowmaker. Uh, I, and on the Tracer, he was pretty pretty good too, right? Like, uh, way back on Li Zhang, popped off, won his team the map, essentially, on Gardens. Like, I, I'd love to see if his hero pool goes a little deeper than that, other than uh, the Widow, Hanzo, and Tracer that we saw. I don't think we saw him play anything else. Um, but on the heroes that he was playing, he was just face-rolling. Right. Panda? I would probably give it to Lockin, uh, the flex support for the side of Team Escape. Those of you at home that do know me and have seen me before, I'm a big support fan, but when you pop off and you lob those orbs of destruction to the heads of your enemies, like Lockin was doing on Anubis, uncontested on that high ground and absolutely obliterating Azaria and Mercy on his own, my heart was sold. Really good play coming out from him. The Ar Harmony orb placement and Discord orb targets were next to, uh, next to nil. Very pro stuff coming out from that off support of Team Escape.
And of course, once again, congratulations to Team Escape. That was it for Open Division EU today. Of course, guys, this is brought to you by Broadcast.gg. Look at the panels right down here on Twitch. Go join the Discord if you're interested in any of the aspects of broadcasting that goes into esports, whether hosts or casters or analysts or behind the scenes. Please come hang out with us. You have a ton of resources at your disposal, and we would love to get to know you. And please do stay tuned. We've got Open Division NA coming up later today. Again, brought to you by Broadcast.gg. It's going to be an awesome time. You don't want to miss it. That is it for us. Thanks, and we will see you later.